All right, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Andy Kane. My name is Andy, as always, and today we're gonna be playing Go Go Nippon, my first trip to Japan. And uh, just before we get into this game, I want to talk a little bit about some things. Um, rocking a new setup um, instead of using like the webcam and stuff like that, like I did uh, when I was playing Undertale. I decided to change it up a little bit. Um, I'll put a link in the description below for uh, the actual setup that I use for recording. But basically, like I just have my Sony camcorder on top, my Zoom H2n recorder on the bottom here, and then I got like an acoustic isolation shield about here-ish. And uh, that's hopefully to make it sound better. I don't know how much clickety-clack you're gonna hear on the keyboard, because this game doesn't require a controller, it just requires keyboard, so. <laughs> But in any event, I uh, hope you guys like the new setup. I can't wait to uh, hear how it sounds when I get down to editing this bad boy. So um, anyway, that's what's going on. So here we go. Start the game. Enter my name, Andy. It's already entered. And uh, at the time of this recording, the current exchange rate for one US dollar and uh, Japanese yen is uh, 100, it's 114 Japanese yen to the US dollar. And I've seen it as high as 125, and I've seen it as low as 87. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's begin our journey to Japan. Let's say. It's no use. My dream is finally coming true. I'd planned to sleep on the plane so I'd have plenty of energy. But I haven't felt the slightest bit tired the whole time. But now, <sighs> yeah, I'm kind of feeling that way too. I suddenly feel totally exhausted. That's the time change for you, buddy. But we're now beginning our descent. We ask you to fasten your seatbelts at this time. <laughs> Man, he must have really strapped himself in there, huh? I can't go to sleep now. But at least I'm finally dot dot dot. I'm realizing my dream of coming to Japan. Ellipses. This is that land mass below us must be Japan. Now you're a little late there, guy. You're already in Narita Airport. Wow! This is incredible. I've been saving up my money and studying Japanese hard, all in preparation for this day. My beloved Japan, I swear to make the most of my time here. But there's something I have to do first. I'm going to be here for a week. While I'm here, I'll be staying in the home of a Japanese family. I'll be staying with two brothers I met in a chat room, Makoto and Akira. Jeez, look like Fist of the North Star goons right there. <laughs> they were so happy to hear us finally coming to Japan, they invited me to stay in their home while I'm here. So first off, I have to meet up with the two of them. But where the heck are they? I told them when my plane was coming in, I figured they'd be coming in, uh, to meet me. <laughs> what, they don't have like a guy with a sign or nothing? More ellipses! And I like the uh, little clock in the back right there. Instead of Psycho, it's Keiko. Oh, they even have like the ambient noise of Narita Airport. You know the little dun 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 dun, and then like announcements, and then dun 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 dun. That's a nice touch. Nice touch. But yeah, um, I've been to Narita so many fucking times, dude. You know, during my time in Japan in the Navy. And uh, yeah, it pretty much looks like this. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot more crowded, but uh, the actual uh, aesthetics, pretty much this, so. Hmm, I don't see them in the crowd anywhere. And I don't see anyone who could possibly be them. What am I to do, or going to do? <laughs> oh, hey, it's a girl. Hara? Huh? Um, excuse me, sorry to bother you, but are you? Okay, I'm not gonna do that voice. But are you Andy? Um, yes, my name is Andy, but... 
Then it is you! Thank goodness! I thought we'd gone to the wrong gate for a minute there. Um, but who are you? Oh my, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Miko- I'm Makoto. Misaki Makoto. It's nice to meet you, if that's the right thing to say. Yeah, totally! We'll come hang out. Uh, we can do Netflix and chill, cause, uh, cause Japan recently got Netflix. So let's chill. What? Makoto, you mean you're... Shit. And this is... And I skipped the thing. I wonder if I can go back. What's that do? Okay. Uh, that's nice that you... Okay. What? You mean you're... And this is... Oh, come on. Don't be shy. You have to introduce yourself. Alright. Ah. Um, um, nice to meet you. My name is Akira Misaki. Uh, if that girl is Makoto, then this must be Akira. What? <laughs> what the? What the hell? Really? I never met a guy who was so disappointed to find out that his guy friends were actually girls. Man. What the hell indeed, guy. This should be... an awesome thing. Um, um, uh, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you. More ellipses. Um, what's wrong, Andy? Well, Makoto and Akira, I thought you would be guys. Hung in Japanese. Aren't Makoto and Akira boys' names in Japan? It's always been that way in the manger I read and the animu I watch, so I just... That's true, now that you mention it. We never mentioned that in the chat. And unlike Japanese, you can't necessarily differentiate gender through text in English. It's true that Mako Makoto and Akira are often boys' names in Japan, so it sometimes results in misunderstandings. But it's not so unusual for them to be girls' names, like, well, with us. Okay, lady, you make the rules, you live here, I don't. It really surprised you, didn't it? Um, yeah. I see. Then Makoto and Akira were both girls. I could have sworn they were boys. You know, they probably hid their gender in the chat just because they didn't want to get hit on. Um, that's a common tactic for uh, girl gamers. It is it is what it is. So, Huh? Wait a minute. If they're both girls, does that mean... I just stumbled into a week's stay in a house with two girls. You're only in Japan for a week? Dude, what the fuck, man? You need at least two weeks minimum. To really get a good stay of Japan, just because uh, for the first couple days you're gonna be hella jet lagged, and uh, you're not really gonna be worth doing much of anything until you get over that. So <laughs> you're gonna be like half awake through most of the uh, the sightseeing and all that kind of stuff. But uh, anywho, more ellipses. I totally did. That explains everything! Now that I look at them, they're both super cute. This might be my lucky day. Now that the misunderstanding is cleared up, let's try this again. My name is Misaki Makoto. I'm studying English literature at a university in the city. I look forward to getting to know you. I'm Andy. <laughs> I know! Ah, that's right. I look forward to getting to know you. Both of you. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'm trying to get some uh, voices going for these guys, because I like, I don't want to do the really high-pitched girl voice. It's not good on the vocal cords. This is my little sister, Akira. Hey, Aki-chan. Chan, sorry. 
Nice to meet you. Uh, it's nice to meet you as well, ellipses. Pump in Japanese. But what the? She seemed so happy a minute ago. Why is she giving me the cold shoulder now? Is she some kind of sundere that I've heard about in the animus that I watch and the manga I read? All on Crunchyroll.com for the low, low price of six ninety five. Maybe. What is it, Aki-chan? Why are you so angry? I'm not. I'm not angry at all. Okay, I'm not doing that voice at all. Wowie, zowie. I'm not it. Nah. Oh, don't say that. Are you still mad that he thought you were a guy? Not at all. I said I'm totally not mad. Come on. You were so looking forward to seeing him. Humph in Japanese. I was not. I wasn't looking forward to it much at all. Baka. Uh, I'm sorry. Looks like Aki-chan is in a bit of a bad mood. Don't take it personally. It's just that time of the month. Ah, but sh she looks kind of pissed at me. She's not. She's really not. It's just that time of the month. I mean, come on. The look on her face says it all, right? It happens. Get her some chocolate. Move on. Well, anyway... Now that the introductions are finished, we better get going. I'd like to get you home as soon as possible, but first, I have a favor to ask. What is it? Well, you can speak Japanese, can't you? Can't you? Yeah, I've been studying it back at home. In America. The land of cheeseburgers and guns. And Obama for now. Good. Then from now on, I'd like you to speak as much Japanese as you can, okay? Tell you the truth, Akira's English is a little... bad. Just a squishy to squish. I see. Yes. I had a feeling, judging by pronunciation earlier. Ellipses. There we go. I think I'm gonna talk like Solid Snake now. Oh my god, Melkir. Huh? What? But she didn't, didn't she speak the English in the chat room? I translated all that for her. Ah, that explains everything. Anyway, could we switch to Japanese from here on out? Sure, I understand. Wakarimashita. And all that. Then let's start again. Makoto Akira. Oh wait, that's, that's me. Makoto, uh, Makoto, Akira, I look forward to getting to know you in Japanese. Ah, uh. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I sound more like Seto Kaiba. Screw the rules, I'm a little girl. There we go, that's the voice. Then let's get going. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Still kind of uh, testing out some of the voices, because, yeah. So I, I think I've, I've found a pretty good bunch here, so. To get to our house, first we have to go into Tokyo. Yeah, because Naruto's technically in Chiba. Go into Tokyo, huh? Isn't the airport part of Tokyo? I'm afraid not. We're in Chiba, like I just fucking said, you little shit. The prefecture adjacent to Tokyo. It'll take a little while to get into Tokyo proper. It didn't really take that long. Yeah, a little bit. I never knew that. Yeah, it is kind of weird because like Narita is like advertised as like the Tokyo airport, but it's actually in Chiba, so eh. It's a little inconvenient, but it can't be helped. Tokyo being as small as it is. Anyway, I'd like us to head off to Tokyo, but there's one other thing. Listen, do you have a cell phone? Because I know when that hotline bling, it can only mean one thing. You thought I was just reusing Toriel's voice for this character for some random reason because it's easy to talk on, right? Never forget Goat Mom. A cell phone? Yeah, I have one. It does the international roaming. That must be nice. Very expensive. I see. That should be okay. What do you mean, okay? If you didn't have one, 
We could rent one at the airport. I was going to recommend renting one, but I think it'll be fine using your phone. Yeah, that is uh, something you can do. Um, just get like a little uh, burner phone prepaid kind of dealio. Because I think they only offer uh, typically contract phones in Japan. Um, another thing you can do is just kind of do like Wi-Fi hotspotting. That's another possibility. Um, but yeah, if you can get like a rented phone from the airport, like when you're going back to your home country, you can just turn it in and there you go. I also highly recommend you guys get a, uh, a portable Wi-Fi box, especially if you're doing a, uh, a short stay in Japan. Um, since I was living there, I didn't really have a, a need for one since I had uh, um, home Wi-Fi to begin with. But uh, if you're just staying in uh, Japan for a couple weeks or whatever, highly recommend you get the little portable Wi-Fi hotspots. Okay, let's head to your ellipses. Wait a minute. Huh? What? Take this. Huh? This is... It's a card. What the heck? This is called a Suica. S Suica? Yeah, how should I explain? A prepaid transit card. It's basically like uh, a bus train card. Um, they have like little terminals and stuff that you slap the card on. It's got like a little chip inside and uh, you can put money on it at the little terminals outside the gate. And uh, that's how you travel around Japan. And it's really super convenient. Um, recently, uh, Suica, well, not recently, it's been several years <laughs> since they actually did it, but uh, Suica and Pasmo, which is the card that I had in Japan, was a Pasmo. Uh, they had like a little merging sort of dealio, so that way um, you can use a Pasmo card on a Suica line, and you can use a Suica card on a Pasmo line, and stuff like that. So they're pretty interchangeable. Um, I'm sure they each have their own benefits, but from what I could tell, I couldn't really see any. So Pasmo was the one that I picked, and uh, it served me well. You know, that you were able to get it like custom made with your name on it, so that was pretty cool. Prepaid. Yes, you top up the value on that card, then touch it to the ticket reader at the station, and it automatically deducts your train fare. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Not gonna lie. You can also do it with buses too, but there are certain uh, modes of transportation that you can't use it on. You can't use it on the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train. Uh, you need an actual like ticket ticket like a physical ticket which you can uh, get it at the automated stations um, you can go to like an actual person and order it but uh, if your Japanese is a little eh, then uh, it may or may not be a good option depending on where you go so uh, whenever I use the Shinkansen I always just use the, uh, the automated uh, little machine and uh, that worked out for me just fine it can be very pricey though depending on where you're going so be sure to save them extra months, hun, and uh, stuff like that. And also, uh, the monorails. Uh, Japan does have a couple monorail lines, and uh, you need like a separate little ticket for that. But uh, they're fairly inexpensive, depending where you're going, like maybe four or five hundred yen tops one way. Um, but again, you know, <laughs> I didn't typically use the monorail, so uh, yeah. It's just kind of an every once in a while thing to get to uh, Enoshima, which is a really lovely beach in the Kanagawa area. So, It's a convenient thing to have. You don't need to calculate the fare to your destination or worry about buying tickets. Wow, Suica, huh? Sounds convenient. There's another type of transit card in Tokyo called Pasmo, which I already explained about earlier, but it works the same way Suica does. However, Suica can be used all over Japan, while Pasmo can only be used in the Kanto region. Actually, I didn't know that. I, that that might have changed recently, because I think Pasmo did a big uh, expansion, but uh, I could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I've only been in the Kanto region. I haven't used it in uh, like other parts of Japan, because I haven't been to other parts of Japan. I've just been in the the Kanto uh, region, so she could be right. I don't know. <laughs>
So there's Passmo and Suica. I'll have to remember that. There's one more thing to watch out for. A Suica or Passmo alone isn't enough to get you on a special express train. If you want to ride the special express, you'll need to buy a separate express ticket. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Okay, so uh, the Narita Express, which is the train line going out of Narita, has its own uh, special thing. So you have to get tickets for that. So um, typically what I did to get back home is I would, ha I would uh, get the ticket to drop me off at Yokohama and uh, just go from, I would either, it would be the Yokohama or Shinagawa. Uh, you know, I would typically pick Shinagawa because it's a bit closer and then I can use my regular pass mode to get me uh, home. So that's typically how I would do it. So just because I lived in the Kanagawa area. So your mileage may vary depending on uh, where you are in Japan or where you plan to visit and stuff like that. Oh, I see. Anyway, you can easily buy Sweet Air Passmo cards at the appropriately labeled ticket machines, which you can. And uh, I think the maximum amount you can put on them is $200. Um, so about Nimon, so 20,000 yen. I think, I could be wrong. See? Wow, I see. It even has the Suica written on it. Looks like you changed the language of the ticket machine to English, so even the non japanese speaking tourists can use it. Wowie zowie. Yes, that's true. Okay, I see I can use these machines to top up the card too. That's right. Do you want to try? Uh, sure. I I'll, I'll guess I'll be a cheap ass and add 5,000 yen, or about $50 USD. Let's see, press the touch panel, change it to the English display, and have it yell at you because it's always a little bit louder. Choose amount, insert the money, and wha! Woohoo! I did it! Yata! As the Japanese would say. Um, actually, uh, I guess, like, <laughs> if you're just refilling your Passmo card or something, like, you really don't need to know a whole lot of Japanese to, um, to refill it, like, once you get used to it. Because it's pretty obvious, like, what buttons are what. So, you know, the charge button is in Japanese. It's just in, like, katakana, I think. And you just press it, and then the numbers are all in regular form. They're not in Japanese or anything like that. So you just press it, press the button to say how much you're putting in, put the money in, bam, good to go. So you don't even have to worry about the English button, really, once you uh, get used to it. So And it's a really quick learning curve, so, like, don't even worry about it. Daijoubu, daijoubu. Very well done. This is very good. You are very good. Now you should have 5,000 yen worth of cash stored on your card. Anyway, shall we finally head to Tokyo? Sure, so how do we get there? By helicopter? Let's see, there are several ways, but the best method might be a special express train called the Narita Express, which I already talked about. And uh, another cool thing about the Narita Express, and she might be getting into this uh, here in a bit, but uh, <clears throat> you can, uh, special reserve like really nice seats so the Narja express is already a pretty nice train uh but you can pay a little bit of extra money to sit in the green cars and what those are are uh basically just like way nicer seats um it's usually leather and they have uh plenty of space and um <laughs> all my times going to and from narita i chose the green cars and it's been worth it every time because there's usually not a whole lot of people there the seats are a little bit wider it's just like when you've been on a long flight or you're getting ready to go on a long flight you know you want the best in comfort you know to get you from there to in my case either yokohama or shinagawa typically shinagawa is where i would get off but uh yeah you just spend a little extra money but if you're tight on money you know Regular seats are fine too, but that's just me. So, anyway, uh, the Narita Express. So here, a special express ticket. I bought it for you in advance. Wow, that's nice. Ah, 
Ah! A little bit of water. Let me get you some water! I've heard that in Narita Airport, you can buy a bargain set with several express ticket that comes with a boarding ticket and a Suica card. But only foreign travelers are allowed to buy them, so we couldn't get one for you. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Um, and <laughs> I didn't really take advantage of this because I was living in Japan, so it really wouldn't have helped me out at the time. But uh, if you're planning on visiting Japan and like going to a lot of different places rather than like Tokyo or something like that and sticking around that area, like if you plan on like looping through the whole um, country, I highly recommend getting the... Uh, like the foreigner tourist uh, card because you can save a butt ton of money doing that. So, but it's only really worth it if you're uh, just traveling all over the place in Japan because it's basically like free travel fare for, oh, well, free, quote unquote. <laughs> so you basically plunk down, I think it's $200. But, you know, from there you can travel anywhere in Japan pretty much, you know. So, uh, I think it's definitely worth it, especially if you're traveling from place to place versus um, staying in like a single spot like Tokyo. If you're, if you're just staying in Tokyo, that's fine. Um, just get like a regular Suica Passmo card. You should be good to go. So, but I guess this time we'll just have to do it this way. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, let's use your Suica to get on the train. Just remember that if you're going to use Suica to ride this Special Express, you need to go through the station uh, station attendant's gate. You look like a complete dummy. Got it. Then I better get my Suica ready. It should be in my wallet. Dude, you just fucking got it. You put it away in your wallet already? Shit, son. No need to take it out of your wallet. <laughs> what? Then how am I supposed to use my Suica? Just bring your old wallet close to the machine. Ellipses with a question mark. <laughs> I'm not sure he believes you. If you think we're putting one over on you, just try it. It really works. Wow. But yeah, basically like, uh, and you can also buy uh, single destination tickets which uh, for some people may be a bit cheaper, but I prefer the Passmo Suica card because it's um, just more easier. It's a lot more convenient. You can do more with it than just a typical ticket. So you'd put the tickets and all that kind of stuff in there. Then you swipe your Passmo Suica card on there. It's typically um, blue. If you swipe it over and it's good, it'll flash green. The gate will open and uh, you can go in. But if it flashes red, then like a big little boom boom thing will happen. And uh, um, sometimes maybe the, the thing didn't read, so just try it again. Other times you may be low on funds, or uh, if you like check into a station and try to leave the station, it, it doesn't typically work that way. So like the attendant has to like open the gate for you, which is another kind of embarrassing tip. So uh, be sure not to do that as often as possible. Like. Um, I'd recommend just, you know, getting off at another station or something like that, but anyway. I didn't believe them at all. A card you can use while it's still in your wallet, it's like magic. Just touch your wallet to the icy card terminal and it made noise. That explains everything. It doesn't really make that noise. But, uh, yeah. So, um, what I did was, uh, I had like a little card slot for my phone. So like I'd typically be listening to music or something like that in the uh, train stations cause they're very crowded and I get, I have like really bad, uh, social, like crowd anxiety, I guess it's called social anxiety supposedly. Uh, so like it was very crowded. So I get really nervous and, uh, <clears throat> So I just typically put in like headphones or something like that, turn on some music, you know, listen to some YouTube videos, and that would typically drown out all that kind of stuff and I would feel better. And uh, so anyway, <laughs> instead of having it in my wallet and uh, being worried about like 
dumping all your money out when you go, like, take it out. Um, and looking like a total fucking jabron. <laughs> I would just have it in my, uh, uh, in my phone case, because it had the little built-in card slot. So I would just take my phone, just boop, it would work. And sometimes if it wouldn't read, like, I would just kind of open it up and, you know, actually have the card touch it. So, uh, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work, depending on if there's, like, a bunch of cards in front of it. It may not read right, so uh, just keep that in mind. And also, if you do have something like that, um, put your uh, Pasmo Suica card in the back, so that way it's closest to the back, so that way, like, if you have, like, a credit card or your uh, driver's license or something like that, it won't get in the way. So, um, it can go through a lot, but sometimes it's a little hit or miss. So just to be on the safe side, I'd recommend that. It's really fun to take it out of, or, yeah, that. Whoops, no time to get lost in thought, though. I need to give my special express ticket to the station attendant. Great, now I can ride the Naruto Express. Oh no, the train's about to leave. Come on, hurry up. What? Wait a second. Come on, hurry up. Here, we're going. Shut up, Okuba. <laughs> Wait a minute, don't pull me so hard. Jesus, okay. More ellipses. Less ellipses. Oh yeah. Oh, this takes me back, dude. Oh my god. This looks like... Uh, shit, man. I would say probably Yokohama Shinagawa. No, not Shinagawa. Definitely not Shinagawa. Fuck no. This looks like Yokohama Station. So this is Tokyo Station. Actual, like, Tokyo Tokyo Station? I don't know, kinda looks like it, but not really. Tokyo Station, I think, has, like, the really big ex escalator. So, to pass out, <laughs> hold your Suica up to the turnstile terminal, and it makes the noise. I, I don't know, for some reason they didn't get the exact noise. That's a little weird. Uh, maybe it's trademarked? I don't know. It's a lot louder, and it's more like a, a ding or something like that. Ah, some numbers appeared on the screen. Oh, yeah, that shows how much money. Okay, there we go. Must be the train fare and cash remaining on my card. Yeah, so um, if you travel, you know, if it's your first station getting on, it'll, there's going to be like a little uh, LCD screen that's going to say like, okay, you have this much. It'll just show like a number. And that's basically like how much yen you have on your card. And then when you leave a station, it'll have two numbers. So the first number is going to be how much train fare you used. And then the bottom number is going to be your remaining balance. So that's something to keep in mind if you're traveling on a budget. Or just as a general, you know, the more you know. <laughs> so, that's pretty cool. Here we are. This is Tokyo Station. Bullshit! This is... Wow, this is a real train station. Guess it must be, since we got here on a train, that explains everything. There's so many stores and restaurants and souvenir shops. Yeah, that's kind of uh, the thing with train stations. They're kind of like uh, malls in a way, you know. A lot, of, a lot of you know big Japanese malls are situated within train stations. So you get like uh, big restaurants, uh, department stores, little souvenir shops here and there, stuff like that. It's it's pretty cool. This is. <laughs> I just said, this is less like a station, more like a shopping mall. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking about how big the station is. That's true. Even Japanese people get lost in Tokyo Station if they're not used to it. This doesn't look like Tokyo Station, though. That's the weird thing. Wow, I see. There are 14 lines in the station, including subways and bullet trains. 14 lines? Oh, well, yes. Really must be huge. You get used to it after a while. 
Anyway, we'll be boarding the subway now, so you better keep close to us. Oh yeah, and you can use your Pass Most Week card for subways as well. I forgot to mention that, so. Huh? Where are we going? Where else? Our house, of course. <laughs> I like the look on her face. It's like, yeah. We're gonna show you how we really do it here in Japan. Oh yeah. Come here, nice little American boy. In America. <laughs> oh, alright. I forgot we were going to your house. It's already so late. We'll have plenty of time to show you around the city tomorrow. And you're probably jet lagged as fuck, so yeah. Thanks, I appreciate it. Alright, uh <laughs> I think this is a pretty good time to, to call an episode for now. Um, so with that said, this is the Andy song. It's not it for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning in to this episode of Andy Cade and uh, watching my playthrough of Go Go Nippon, my first adventure or first trip to Japan. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.